Okay, now we're, we're talking about right, the single primary cause of all cancer. Right, and the same factors that rid the skin of wrinkles also create a barrier in the human body against cancer cells. And now, if you probably saw, many of you, the first part of this, we decided to go ahead and do the recap and put it all together for continuity. Now, and then, additionally, those things that we haven't done to uh, make it clear to you, right, you let us know, and the great thing about these little things is you can edit them easily enough or add something to them to clear up all the little uh, nuances. All right. Now, the remember right, that the amount of knowledge in the universe is doubling about every three or four years. So about half of what a physician learns while he's in med school is obsolete by the time he starts practicing. So this physiciancliffnotes.net site Right, provides timely research to keep doctors and interested people up to date. Now, before we discuss the wrinkle rid and the cancer barriers, here's a current article in today's newspaper that the following cliff note already discusses. It has to do with a cure for the common cold. Let me read you a little excerpt here. Medical Research Council's Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge, this comes out of the Great Britain, all right, has been able to show for the first time that the body's immune defenses can destroy the common cold virus even after it has invaded the inner sanctum of a human cell. This provides more generality right, in our understanding of immunity and infection. You're going to find out how the human body does this all right, and what kind of molecules are required. It requires in order to do this, and I'll guarantee you that this article was written long before this came out in the paper. All right, now, so, and remember, all right, that doctors often say there will never be a cure for cancer. There's too much profit in making money to fight it. Maybe that's why they don't reveal the one primary cause of all cancer. Well, you're going to learn it today. First of all, the skin. Remember, the skin is the largest organ of the human body. It's like a bank or an, ar or an armory. And is largely composed of stores of omega-6 fatty acids and the hero cholesterol. It is held together by the collagen matrix. Right? And that collagen matrix is composed largely of the metabolite ascorbate mineral C. Now when the sun rays bathe the skin, the hormone vitamin D3 is formed. Now this is the trigger that initiates many activities in the body. One of them is the destruction of pathogens such as cool viruses, flu viruses, cancer cells. The average person is estimated to have cancer anywhere from six to ten times during his lifetime. But the body's immune system, when it is strong, overcomes it. Now, before we go to the one primary cause of all cancer, let's explain the immune system itself. Each cell in the body contains hydrogen peroxide. That's H2O2. You remember that from your grammar school uh, science. All right, it also contains the enzyme catalase. Now, when the body has plenty of ascorbate, mineral C, right, in conjunction with the trigger, right, which is vitamin D3, it forms H2O2, that's the hydrogen peroxide, okay? Now, that catalase that we talked about breaks the H2O2 down into H2O, which is water, and that leaves a singlet oxygen molecule, or a bullet, if you will. Now, the body's immune system, when it contains plenty of the mineral C, it creates all these little warriors. They're lymphocytes and T cells and macrophages. The vitamin D identifies those pathogens, those invaders, those bugs, if you will, and says, sick them. The warrior cell. It zaps the cold virus, or the flu virus, or the cancer cell with that little singlet oxygen bullet. And it kills it on contact. Now, 
That little warrior cell then engulfs its prey and it has little tentacles and it rips it all to pieces. All right, and then it morphs or changes right into a garbage man. Then it goes to the liver. And remember, the liver is where all pathogens are processed. Right? And the proteolytic enzymes in the liver clean up that little garbage man and turn him back into a little warrior cell and send him back out, put him back on patrol again. Now this battle is going on in the body all the time. Every minute, every second, every millisecond of the day. Because the little pathogens or the bugs, they're always there. The average person had cold or flu two to four times annually. And they invariably say, I caught it from somebody. Somebody on the bus. Or somebody at work. We blame it on somebody else when we're the real culprit. We didn't give the body what it needed to maintain its immune system to keep having plenty of those little warrior cells, to keep having plenty of that vitamin D3, that trigger. And then we get the cold, and what do we do? We compound the felony. The body raises its temperature when it's processing toxins. And our noses run to clean out the toxins. And we cough to expel the mucus. So what do we do? <laughs> we take a sugar alcohol syrup that contains an NSAID, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug like a uh, uh, like acetaminophen, Tylenol, number one killer of human beings in the world, number one drug killer, right? to eliminate that inconvenience of the cough, etc. All right. Now, what does the body's immune system do? Well, the first thing it's got to do is it's got to fight all of that stuff because it was the latest invader. It's got to fight that alcohol and that sugar and that Tylenol, right, before it can get back to fighting the virus. So rather than a matter of hours, we suffer a week or more, and we blame it on somebody else. When those things we mentioned earlier, the D3, the mineral C, were what the body needed to get rid of its cold itself by the end of the day. Which brings us around to cancer. Cancer is not an invader. Not like a cold virus. It is created inside the body. And because of what we've uh, tried to blame it on in our families, our mom, dad, grandparents, step-uncle, third cousin, twice removed, we blame anybody but ourselves. The nation's top scientific researchers have let the snake out of the bag. And I'm talking about MIT, Harvard, Duke, all of them. And they named the names of those who have misled the epidemiologists. There is no Anka cancer gene. But it's so easy to get money from people if they still believe the lies. They can run up and down roads. They'll climb anything. They'll sacrifice their own lives in hope of a gene that isn't there. Folks, Elvis has left the building. Spend the money somewhere else. It is silly raising vast amounts of money to correct a cancer's gene that has been proven to not exist. The primary cause of all cancers, you can call it a melanoma or carcinoma or leukemia, just, you know the big ones, is an oxygen deficiency at the cellular level. Inside the cells, hundreds of little power plants that we talked about earlier, where energy is created. Now, when there's not enough oxygen for the cell to create its energy through normal oxygen respiration, it either dies or it reverts to a primitive fermentation for energy. These cancer cells require large vascular networks for the vast amount of carbohydrates they need in order to survive and thrive. These cancer cells just eat and multiply. They are of no benefit to the human body. The telomeres on the end of their DNA code do not shorten to cause normal cell death. It's called apoptosis. Now what causes this lack of oxygen? A 
adulterated cooking oils. You look on anything you fry with, if it says partially hydrogenated, it is a trans fat, it is adulterated, and it is a cancer causing agent. The second foremost thing is carbohydrates, which the body converts into sugar for storage. It also deoxygenates the cells and causes cancer. Thus, the axiom sugar causes cancer, sugar feeds cancer. It is impossible, impossible for a fully oxygenated cell to become cancerous. It cannot happen. To illustrate the point, notice how cancer cells are created in the lab. Researchers withhold oxygen from healthy cells overnight. By the next morning, they're cancerous 100% of the time. So how do we keep the oxygen level high? The lungs bring the oxygen into the body. It is transported throughout the body by the hemoglobin in the blood. Now once at the cell, it is transferred through the cell wall by omega-3 fatty acid. Then it is transferred into the mitochondria, the energy plants, here we are again, right, by omega-6 fatty acid. Much more 6 is required than 3. And then when there's enough of the 6s, right, it is stored in the skin. The skin stays pretty and helps create that barrier against cancer. And in that pretty skin is that vast amount of the omega-6s ever ready to initiate bug-zapping oxygen. And that's where we started with the largest organ of the body and the skin and the cancer. We hope this hasn't bored you.